Hi all, I am Nitesh Kuhl and welcome back to our channel ML4 Analytics. In this video tutorial, we will be studying about Azure Data Ingestion Services. So what do we mean by ingestion services? These are the services which are used for moving our data into the storage services or storage locations provided by Azure. For example, if I have a uh, let's say Excel file in my desktop and I want to store it into a uh, Azure data storage like Azure data like Gen2 or blob storage or something like that then these services ingestion services come into the role like they will pick up our file from our system and then transform it and move it into the, uh, in the services for Azure it can even save our data directly to the SQL uh, SQL servers or data warehouses provided by Azure so let's deep dive into it and see what are the services being provided by SEO for data ingestion. So before moving to that, uh, data services or the services provided by SEO broadly can be divided into four parts. The first one is data ingestion that I will be covering in this video. The next one comes the storage of data or the storage services you can say and there will be like Azure Data Lake Gen 2, Gen 1, Blob Storages, and Data Warehouse, SQL, or you can say no SQL services as well. So we will be looking at that in our next tutorial. And then next comes uh, prepared data for analysis. That is like all the data which is being saved in our servers, then uh, preparing it or transforming it in some way which can be used for analysis then the last one is the analysis service like streaming data analysis so let's move on and um, data ingestion mostly covers three services being provided by SEO the first one is uh, HDFS or the Hadoop file system Hadoop distributed file system data factory version 2 and polybase Hadoop distributed file system so as the name suggests, distributed file system, our data is distributed among different servers. For example, uh, let's say if I have 10 GB of data and I have a server which can accommodate maximum of 1 GB of data, then we will be taking 10 such servers and we will be saving our data distributed, equally distributed among all those 10 servers. So what will be the advantage of it over a single server of 10 GB? The biggest advantage it provides us is the parallel processing, which is not possible in a single server, like a SQL server. Then the second thing, it supports horizontal scaling. Unlike, L, unlike SQL server, which supports only the vertical scaling, that is, we keep on increasing its horsepower, or you can say the CPU computation power, or other things in a single server, uh, which comes with a very high cost. So instead of that, we distribute our systems and increase the number of servers or storages which is cheaper than a single server and the biggest part of it is like we can just distribute our data and apply a computation on a different system we don't need to move the complete data our data can stay rest, stay at rest at different servers and computation can be moved from one system to another that is what it means is like I can change the platform for computation and my data is just saved among different locations so that is another advantage of HDFS and yes it is good for big data analysis which requires massive parallel processing and in in case of Azure how it is used Azure provides a service called HD Insight which is then uh, which is then in uh, which is then used in Azure data factory you can say in different services as well uh, which is basically a service based on HDFS only and another thing what HDFS does is it follows a hierarchical namespace system for example this is the link of or one of our articles from my web from my blog uh, for example ml4analytics.com is the base website link you can say then there will be a folder called 2020 then in that folder there is a folder called 505 then there is another folder called 24 then in that folder there is article called e-commerce website scraping using power bi 
so what it does is like uh, hierarchically the that how i am saving the file in the server it is just putting that everything over here like 2020 then 05 then 24 all these folders then the final file after it so hierarchical order is being followed over here that is why I, uh, that is why we are saying that hdfs supports hierarchical namespace let's move on to the next part azure data factory version 2 so what is the use of azure data factory the biggest use of azure data factory is for creating data pipelines by data pipelines i mean controlling the complete flow of data from one location to another and all uh, accumulating all the transformations required to save the data into the azure storages in the required form of or you can say in the required schema you want to save the data um, it will uh, for example i have an excel file and i want to save it into a sql service provided by azure then what it will do is like create a pipeline and what we can do in that pipeline is like first of all pick up the file from the system read the data from the excel file then transform it so that it can be saved into the sql server of the azure then save it over there and it can internally uh, it can automate the process of etl and elt and uh, it can be used for sending on premise data to cloud it can even be used for preparing data like we heard at the very beginning we checked that preparing data is the third part of the flow of the services however as your data factory can be used for preparing data as well not just for ingestion purpose that is another advantage of Azure Data Factory and one of the greatest advantages of Data Factory is that it can skip one step and directly ingest data into Azure Data Warehouse because Azure Data Warehouse is a service which is being used for analyzing the data or you can say for preparing the data so directly from the ingestion part it can move to the preparation part and save the data into the Azure Data Warehouse and so overall it is creating automated pipelines or data pipelines for ingesting data and preparing data and then that data can directly be used for further analysis polybase polybase is not a separate service in azure however it is built in different services of azure for example azure data warehouse azure data factory and even in azure sql services so what it does is it virtualizes the data like there is no need to move data from one location to another it will provide a virtualization over the data from wherever the data is stored then that data can be used for another purposes like for preparation for transformation or whatever we need so it is basically an interface which uh, which is embedded in all different services and can be used to check the data being saved in different locations either in the on-premise data sets or on-premise services servers or either in the cloud servers or even the azure servers you can say so there is no need to exactly move the data and even if we need to move the data polybase can be used and it is very useful while moving very large amount of data because it also provides some extent of parallelism as well while moving the data and it is generally used for archiving data in blob storages we will come to blob storages later on uh, blob storage is a kind of storage service provided by azure uh, so we will be discussing in depth after this video tutorial and another thing it is it can be easily integrated with business intelligence tools and how is that possible that is very much possible because it provides a data virtualization and that data virtualization can directly be used as an interface of data source for business intelligence tools like power bi and last thing is like it can easily query outside data by outside data what i mean is like this is a service of seo it can query the sql transactions query even do the import and export fun uh, functionalities over the SEO data warehouse even for the on-premises data warehouses as well so that is why it can easily query outside data so guys 
this is an overview of all the three services which are being provided by Azure for data ingestion purposes. And in the next video tutorials, we will look about how we can or what is being covered by what is being provided by Azure for data storage, preparation of data for analysis and analysis services. So thank you guys. Have a nice day. I hope you liked it. Please do subscribe and comment and do share the video. If you like the video, please click the like button and if you want to learn more or if it if there is something specific that you want to learn from me and I will be there to teach it to you. Just comment over here and I will cover it in my next tutorials. So thank you guys. Have a nice day.